Okay, so I'm going to do a few videos to accompany the book Learn PHP for Beginners because books are okay, but sometimes when you're just starting out, just a little bit of visually being shown what to do and just a little bit of extra explanation can really help. So along with the book, we're also going to have a few videos, just something from each chapter, maybe to explain some of the stuff which I felt would need a little bit more explaining or would be easier for a beginner to understand if I just put on the video and showed them what I was meaning by certain things. And so here we're going to start uh, with an example from chapter one and we're going to create our very first PHP file. I'll show you how to create that file, how to run it in the terminal and also how to run it in the browser using PHP's built-in server. And so I've created a brand new project. This editor I'm using, you can use whatever you've got. You might be using just a simple text editor, as long as it doesn't sort of add styles to the text or anything like that. And it just uh, creates your code just as code without any additional markup, then it should be okay. I use PHP Storm, which is paid for, but you can do like a 30 day free trial or you can use VS Code, which of course is free, and you'll find all this information in the book. So let's go ahead and create our first uh, PHP file. So this will be from chapter one. So what we'll do is we'll break this into chapters. And so inside of this top level folder here, Learn PHP, I'm going to create a new folder inside of there, and we'll just call it number one, and we'll just call it set up so we'll number each of these and then what we're going to do is just create our first php file and so uh, php files here as you can see in php storm it gives you like a pre-formatted i can select php file and it'll automatically append uh, the php extension onto that but let's just create it as a plain file because you might not be using php storm and I'll show you how you create the actual file names. So for PHP files, it's the name of whatever you want to give it. So we're just gonna call this one, hello. We're just gonna do a simple hello world. So hello dot, and then the extension for PHP files is simply PHP. Okay, and so for PHP files, what you need to do, and you don't have this in, I don't think in many other languages or maybe any other languages, where you have to actually say what language you are using at the top of the file. However, in PHP you do, you have to do this. So it's a, a left angle bracket, question mark, and then PHP. And so you might be wondering, well, how come you need to do this in PHP? Why don't you do this in other languages? And I think the reason for this is because when PHP first came about, it was obviously used for the web and you typically mix PHP code with HTML code for rendering uh, web pages. And so you'd write some PHP code. When you'd finished writing your PHP code, so PHP, goes here so we'd write a lot of code there but then when you were switching back to html or whatever other language you'd have to close you'd have to delimit the php so all the php goes within here and to close it it's simply question mark and the right angle bracket so you don't need to write php again here it's just the question mark and the closing bracket and then you can go and write your HTML here. So it's a bit less common to see this these days mixing PHP and HTML. However, it's still done under the hood using things like twig files and blade files, which we cover in my later courses. So for the time being, all you need to know is uh, for your PHP files, whenever you create a new one, you have to open it with this tag here. Now, if you're not going to add any HTML or any other uh, kind of markup or language after your PHP, then you don't actually need the closing uh, question mark and angle bracket. And so in this one, we're not gonna add any HTML or anything like that. We're simply going to echo out a string of text. And so in order to print a string of text, you can use a keyword called echo, which is most common, or you can use one called print. And so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use echo because this is probably the most common one uh, you'll use. And you can use double quotation marks 
or you can use single quotation marks. Now, when we get onto strings and text, I'll explain the difference between the two. But here, let's use uh, double quotes, and we're just going to say hello, comma, PHP world exclamation mark. Okay, and then at the end of any line of PHP code, you need a semicolon. And trust me, that semicolon will catch you out so many times when you're a beginner and you'll get uh, warnings or you'll get errors. And a lot of the time it will be because you've simply started a new line of code without closing the last one. And that new line of code won't make sense if you haven't closed the last one. So always remember in PHP, semicolon at the end of each line of code. Okay, so we've just created our first PHP file there. How do we run this? We can run it in the terminal or we can run it in the browser. So first of all, we'll run it in the terminal. And that's how we'll do things with a lot of the code in this uh, book, because it's just quick and easy to just run a PHP command in the terminal and see the result rather than having to spin up a server. In order to run PHP in a browser, you need to have a server running. Fortunately, PHP provides its own built-in server for local development. All right, so we need to make sure we're in the right location here. So uh, we're currently in Learn PHP. We need to change directory into setup. So CD space one setup. We're now in the setup folder, which means we can run this hello.php file. How do we do that? We simply use the PHP command followed by the name of the file and that will run this file, which should print out hello PHP world. Let's test that theory. Okay, and so that is what we see. Hello, comma, PHP world. This percentage sign here means that there is no new line on the end of this. So it's actually your terminal which has added that and not the program. But we can put a new line on there. If we do backslash and then N and then run it again, it creates the new line and you don't get that uh, percent sign at the end of there. So maybe uh, going forward, what we're going to do is we're going to use something called the PHP constant, which actually injects this into there for us, but we'll not get ahead of ourselves. I'll explain that when I explain that. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to run this in the browser and then you'll know both ways of running PHP. And so PHP comes with its own built-in server. And to start that, you need this command here, php hyphen s followed by localhost and then a port number. So localhost colon, and you can choose any port number, just make sure you are using one which is not already in use. I'll hit enter here. Okay, so this is telling me it started a server at localhost colon 8000. If I go to this address in my browser, okay, at the moment it will say not found, but what we need to do is tag on the name of the file. So hello.php, and as you can see, it now renders that content in the browser. And so there we have just seen two ways of rendering the same content or executing the same file in the terminal and also in the browser. We know how to create a PHP file, you know the opening tag, and you've also seen how we can print some text using the echo command. Okay, so hopefully that all made sense. Let's move on.